Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fasal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for the trading session of Tuesday, the 3rd of January 2017. Happy New Year to everyone. Hope you've had a good uh, festive season, good Christmas, good uh, New Year. Hope you've enjoyed it. Okay, we'll recharge your batteries and. Uh, 2017 here we come now 2017 certainly starts off with a bang with the FTSE 100 certainly uh, setting new highs and we'll certainly come on to that very shortly uh, the US markets certainly have been problematic whilst the European markets certainly continue their stellar run on the back of this weaker euro phenomenon okay so please be sure to visit trade signal signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com you can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store in terms of uh, markets overnight in Asia, the Nikkei was certainly weaker overnight. Uh, the Hang Seng and the Shanghai both up by 1 and 0.7%, so pretty impressive move there. Uh, overnight, it certainly seems that uh, concerns of, well, we've certainly had stronger data out overnight, and that certainly hasn't uh, triggered a risk aversion play, given the fact that, uh, as we all know, stronger economic data negates the need for further rate cuts and a, uh, a stimulus-led PBOC, especially given the fact that they've said that they're going to compromise in terms of growth. Okay, we also had the uh, high the um, uh, Chinese version of LIBOR rate, right? certainly uh, uh, moving higher, and there was a uh, an adjustment in the basket or currency bar basket itself for the yuan, and the impact that will have again that is going to be debatable. Okay, so okay, so uh, the uh, China obviously up by one percent. You had uh, the Hang Seng up as well. Okay, so. Uh, the news flow going into this morning, we've had stronger economic data from uh, Spain, Italy, Germany as well. The likes of the German unemployment certainly dropping quite substantially. And also UK PMI data coming out very, very stellar. Okay, now in terms of uh, economic data for the remainder of the year, day, uh, let's just have a look here. German uh, CPI data, that will be important given the fact that the French CPI inflation data certainly came out on the weaker side. Red book sales, market PMIs, ISM, construction spending, and also the Kiwi auction as well. So that should be interesting going on uh, into the afternoon. Now let's look at the actual technical picture now in Europe and let's see exactly where we stand. Now the German DAX certainly is holding this gap fill, which I've uh, certainly been focusing on. It's holding that 11.610 zone. Okay, if it breaks above that, then the 11.670 resistance is next on the German DAX. On the weekly chart, the German DAX. The next real horizontal resistance is seen uh, around this region here, 11.610 to 11.670, then obviously 11.700 as well. Uh, again, it's more of a euro um, weakness trade today. I mean, you can certainly see here, if I bring up the uh, four hour or even a 60 minute chart, you can see that we certainly pushed higher and that certainly uh, that push higher certainly has been negated. We hit a pivot higher 1.0660 and now we reversed almost 260 pips. Again, that's, that's what happens in light volume uh, holiday environment. So that certainly is a status quo at present for the euro. Oh, uh, impressive flush from 1.05 all the way down to 1.04. So 100 pip sell off, even with stronger PMI data yesterday, also stronger German data today. It certainly seems more of a US dollar trade as opposed to the euro. OK, so again, a weak euro generally does help European equity. So bear that in mind. Now, the um, the actual thrust higher on the uh, the weaker euro uh, certainly has been digested given the move from 11.400 yesterday up to 11.620. Very, very impressive move. Certainly an impressive breakout. Seven minute chart at the moment. We are putting in a lower high. Okay, certainly showing weakness from my perspective. Certainly showing weakness on the German DAX. Again, we haven't, we failed to retest that 11.640 or revisit that. So therefore you are looking for a lower high. Now, if you move over to the French CAC, let's see exactly where that stands. Okay, so French CAC, let's go to the weekly chart first of all for the French CAC. Okay, so already in no man's land, the only real next resistance is that 5,000 level. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not we continue there. Again, light volume will be playing an important part. You are putting in a doji on the daily chart. So again, bear that in mind. 60 minute chart certainly seems to be exhausted now. And on the 10 minute chart, you do have the unfilled gap below. So whether or not we can actually close that gap. And as you can see here, that's the gap that I'm potentially targeting at the 4880 zone currently 4906 so just bear that in mind that potential gap certainly does remain in play okay uh, now you do have previous resistance equals support so again that will play a, play a major factor as well but for now that gap certainly remains to, uh, a potential target given the fact that uh, you are obviously holding resistance on European equities okay now in terms of the FTSE 100 very very stellar on the daily chart H&S formation certainly has been negated now 
I was looking for a H&S and that certainly has been negated. We've certainly pushed higher, but we are putting in a topping tail. So whether or not this uh, move itself is going to be accepted or rejected is another question altogether. Okay, so again, just bear in mind that a topping tail certainly is being put in. Okay, if I take the actual pivot load, let's see if I can um, just draw a potential trend line here. Okay, a week. Okay, a week. Let's just leave that for now. We've broken out. Whether or not we can sustain that breakout, that's the question. Okay, 60 minute chart certainly pushed higher, uh, gapped higher as well. I mean, very impressively gapped higher. And whether or not that gap can be sustained now, that's the question. 10 minute chart has the unfilled gap below at 7117. Okay, so again, let's see if that comes into play. If it does, that generally indicates weakness, so bear that in mind, okay? So very, very important to understand. Okay, so FTSE itself, home fill gap below at 7117. Let's see if we can close that gap. The pivot high today has been 7205, so certainly knocked, knocked out the stop at 7200 before it started to reverse conveniently, okay? Conveniently. In terms of the Euro stocks, let's just bring up the Euro stocks for you here. Okay, there's no Euro stocks at the moment. Okay, we'll leave that, leave it at that for now. Uh, S&P 350, looking at the S&P 350 chart, a weekly, uh, again, you are into horizontal resistance. You've closed the gap now, okay, or potential gap, and you do have horizontal resistance. So you are looking at weakness here on the weekly chart, daily chart as well. You're expecting weakness as well, given the fact that you've closed that potential gap. You are into horizontal resistance at this juncture. Previous support equals resistance, horizontal resistance, and you do have that key diagonal trend line resistance as well. So, from my perspective, European equities certainly are into turbulence and are looking to potentially move lower with the euro potentially moving higher. Okay, on that note, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye.